So I'm going to do a couple of little videos today. I've tried to put everything in one video and it ends up very long and all over the place. So I'm just going to make short and sweet ones. Um, I just wanted to advise people about Archive.org and like I have got to the end of being able to search through um, ordinary search engines on what's available on the internet. So now the next place to look is the Wayback Machine. I'll just um, bring this up. This is Truthology on the Wayback Machine. And as you can see, there's been 107 captures between August 2009 and November 12th, 2020. And all of these ones here on the little scale indicate the captures. And if you highlight one, I'll go to 2016, let's have a look. All these ones that have got something on there, you can then have a look. I'll pause it while it's loading. Okay, so here we have the capture of Truthology's website. And you can go down from anything after 2012 where it was made free. And, um, all right, I had to pick on a Freedom Summits one. That probably won't come up. Most of the others have been coming up. Hang on, I'll pause it again while it comes up. All right, so it did come up. It's got... Um, all these different things that, um, oh, that's a different name I haven't seen on other pages. Jaya Droma and Mark Harrington. They are actually new names. They, and why I say they are new names, oh, this is interesting. Hang on a sec. Sorry, I hadn't actually followed this particular post link before. It's interesting to see. Um, there was actually in other tabs that I've got open here where you can click on to get a profile explanation and it seems like um, well they have got some of them in this circumstance whoa so they don't want much for their price back in 2016 <laughs> but then again I suppose that you're hearing all this valuable information so anyway you can obviously see that even though uh, the truthology website doesn't exist anymore in the current tense there's uh, it exists in the way back machine and it also gives a little bit of a, a bio on them but also too this is uh, 2016 but if we have a look at this is round two of the speakers in uh, 2014, I think it is. You can see that Mr. X, Adrian Brannock, is mentioned here. Now, most of these videos, other than those that are um, named as members, like Samantha Backman, Mark Darwin, they're all still up there on Mark Darwin's Freedom Summits, more on his YouTube channel with all these Freedom Summits videos. However, his Mark Darwin one is hidden, the Samantha Backman one is, and all the others that are associated with them. So here's um, another Freedom Summits. You follow their links and this is where it ends up. It tells you about their Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane. And here we've got the speakers all the different speakers, the ones that aren't mentioned on the previous page. And as I said, when I mentioned those other ones were new, they are not mentioned at all through any of these. You have a look on this one. This one, I uh, should notice too that this one is actually 2014. It's not 2016 that we were looking at. This one is also 2014. This one 2014. I bought this one up because it is slightly different because it itemizes the speakers differently 
And it's also got Mr. X in there, a.k.a. Adrian Brennock or Andrew Brennan, whichever name he wants to use, specialist in negating fines and infringement notices and telling you how to go about claiming fraudulent transactions that could end you up in jail for making false declarations of fraud. But don't mention that little fact to people because they, <laughs> I think they'll find that out when they end up in jail for what um, AB was successfully able to get away with to this point. Because you know what, uh, you, your actions have become very public on how you did it now. There are five people you made non-disclosure agreements to and five people you swore that there was fraud on your accounts when clearly the only fraud was what you perpetuated in saying there was fraud. When you spend all this money you s yourself, you cannot claim fraud. But anyway, so there's a lot of different things that you can find out on going through the Wayback Machine. And one thing you should notice too here, see this says 107 captures. This one has only got three captures. When you look at each page, it will tell you how many captures of that page there is. And when you do follow a link, there's no guarantees, like any of these that you click on. If you click on the posts up here, it's still going to bring you up the same set of posts. Uh, it's well maybe I'm saying it's the same set of posts because they stopped making them after a certain stage I don't know hang on I'll pause oh no I won't pause it <laughs> so here you have uh, all the different posts that have been made and when you click on next it can suddenly go from one of nine to um, seven of eighteen so there is some sort of a little I don't know, a bit of a glitch if you try and... But if you click on, like if you click on this one, let's just take Agenda 21. Most of these will still come up because they're, um, well, pretty much they're just words on a piece of paper. They're not something that is linked to an external source or a video or something like that. So what did they write on there? It was a fair bit. So again, see this video here, um, you might have trouble accessing it. But I can tell you too that there is um, also the possibility that you will have success. Like I um, went on to Wayback Machine, I bought up the Crow House and the Crow House gave me links to follow through to a video that I had not been able to get and I knew was not available publicly even on Max's Bitchute and Alt Censored he made sure he got rid of that video. Well I was actually able to through Wayback Machine actually listen to that whole video and screen record the whole 27 minutes of it. And after I'd done that, I realised why Max Egan wanted that video gone. Not only was it pathetic in so many ways, but he also said about all these sovereignty, um, whatever way they try and set up these sovereignty, you know, one, the basic foundation is we don't want to pay taxes, we want to set up our own rules, we want to live by our own terms and conditions, and we're going to fight uh, a system that we say is invalid, we're going to use laws that we say are invalid and we're going to use the invalid laws to fight the invalid government with because we're going to win that way. Well, yeah, even Max Egan back in 2016 said it was utter rubbish. He's already looked at enough of them and seen enough of them fail with the OPPT being the latest that yes, he first originally got caught up in that idea of its success and then did a very big backpedal and said oh well, I always said it was going to fail it's like no you didn't but uh, in 2016 this video that Max Egan deleted he makes it quite clear that all of these sovereignty issues are rubbish they cannot win and there's another video I will upload 
with one guy's opinion on what you can expect to encounter if you go down the I, me, mine, I want to sing, sit up as king of the castle with all my own rules and bugger the rest of society. See what's going to be in store for you, your family and anybody else that has the misfortune to be getting dragged up into your opinions and your attempt to validate your opinions through a legal system that will never validate you. Never. All right, I'm getting off subject. I said I wanted it to be short. This one is just to show how you can use the Wayback Machine. Even on current websites, I've um, done it on the OSTF, and I've actually found that uh, under their media, there's nothing that comes up currently. But there used to be something that came up. Uh, quite a few documents, actually. A lot of them, I can't understand why they'd even not have them up anymore. One of them I can, because um, it seems like that two people that claimed um, a skin name of Jag, J-A-G, Amara, uh, couldn't uh, even <laughs> get their own claimed skin names correct. Couldn't even spell them correctly. And, uh, yeah, I could understand there was a Gary Jagamara as well as Mark McMurtry using his tribal Jagamara last name. Jagamara, yes, not, and I'm not going to say it out of respect, but not um, what he has been claiming. So he can't even spell his name right. But then again, I suppose when you've got multiple personalities, multiple names, pretty hard to keep up with, well, how do you spell it? Um, where, is there a space in there? Is is that an A or is that a U? Or, <laughs> I mean, it seems like that there is a, as many different spellings of Minjimbo as there are amongst the members that try and spell it the same way. You know, they could actually promote their business by using the same consistent name, but, you know, they just don't even spell that right. I mean, small things, you know, spelling mistakes. But hey, they niggle me, little things like that. If I've written something that I can't change when I've spotted a spelling mistake or uh, when I touch type because of the weaknesses I've got in my left hand, um, quite often the letter I hit doesn't show up in the text I typed and it's not until later I realise, oh. But, but, you know, they're only little things and I think people get the message anyway, even if you do make a little bit of a spelling mistake. But you know what? I've never spelt my name wrong. I know how to spell my name. <laughs> oh, Mark McMurtry. You're all pretty good, aren't you, at uh, pretending to be something you're not. Anyway, I'm going to leave it at that with this one and introduce other things in other videos because there's a couple of things that I want to bring up, but I don't want to make them long videos. People can pick and choose what they want to watch instead of getting bored listening to me for half an hour ramble on to get to, oh, well, I wanted to hear that and you didn't say much about that. So, yeah, sorry about that. But, uh, yeah, anyway, so I'll catch you on the next video. <laughs> Take it easy.